Farah had been hard meta for the past few weeks, so when Blizzard pushed out their hotfix this week, Farah was expected to get butchered. That didn't really happen. There's been a lot of hate surrounding the devs' decision not to burn Farah at the stake, and I just want to say I'm happy they didn't. I'm also very disappointed in the amount of content creators for this game who are posting rage bait clips in an effort to deceive players into thinking Farah got buffed. I think that she got one of the best changes from this hotfix. Do I think Farah is perfectly balanced as is? No, but there are far bigger fish to fry at the moment. My name is Admiral Kane, I am a 1500 hour Farah Echo 2 trick. Overwatch was my first FPS game I started playing back in 2017 and was quite literally bronze. Uh, I've come a long way since then, I've peaked at rank 150 and have been Grandmaster for most of Overwatch 2, so I've experienced what it's like to be a Farah at every level of this game. I don't generally make videos, but I've done this rant about 15 times on my Twitch stream and figured it would just be easier to put it here. Farah has always been in a weird balancing situation. She has always excelled in low rank play because players with weak mechanics struggle to kill her, and players with bad awareness don't always know where she is. On the flip side, players with weak mechanics can actually get value with her due to the splash damage their rockets have, and players on Farah with bad awareness don't really have to worry because you have an aerial view of the battlefield. This has been the case since the character was created, and will likely remain the case forever. This is simply a skill issue. In mid ranks, Farah has always struggled. Players with weak mechanics who get to the mid ranks off of her splash damage are unable to compete with the hit scan players that are now actually capable of hitting their shots. Plus, you have Echo, who has comparable airtime and high burst damage combos that allow them to outduel a Farah who cannot hit their directs. In high ranks, Farah shifts around from being insanely powerful to being incredibly weak. This is not due to getting massive changes, but rather the meta shifting around due to her strengths and weaknesses with and against other characters. Farah did not get buffed in Season 10. She started appearing because she had a playstyle that fit in with Malga and Sigma, and her ability to spam out tanks became a necessity to prevent those characters from running over the lobby. The Season 9 changes also meant that she could take duels and 1v1s if she needed to, but that was secondary to the fact that her spam potential was nearly unlimited. So now here we are, Season 11. Farah's been meta for about 5 weeks, and she's gotten her first change since Season 9. Despite this being a much smaller and simpler change than her rework, I feel like there's even more content out there revolving around Farah. There are some really big names in the Overwatch scene just absolutely hating on her changes, and I'm really unhappy with how they're going about it, and how wrong they're getting the character. Good job devs, you nerfed Farah by buffing her. Still does damage. Z uh, last time I checked, 35 is not zero. So direct hits still do damage. This video clip, posted by Metro, surfaced shortly after the patch dropped. He makes a false claim that Farah's Concussive Blast wasn't actually nerfed because the damage is still there. The patch notes made it very clear that the 30 damage was coming from the explosive damage, the splash damage, not the direct hit. Metro plays this game a lot. He is most definitely aware that the 30 direct hit damage has been in the game since the release of Overwatch 2 almost two years ago. 30 splash damage was only added during the Season 9 changes a few months back, but since Farah is largely disliked by a vast majority of casual players, it's easy to rage bait for views, comments, and other interactions. Farah Rockets and Farah Concussive Blast both function the same way. They dealt direct hit damage to the target that was hit by the rocket, and then did splash damage to everyone within the explosive radius, including the person hit. Farah Rockets currently do 120 damage, up to 80 damage for targets inside the splash radius, and 40 to the target that was hit directly. Concussive Blast was functionally identical. Direct hits did 60 damage, 30 from the direct hit, and 30 from the splash. All this patch did to directly change Faro was revert the Season 9 change to Concussive Blast. Therefore, it retains the 30 damage from direct hits that it had prior to Season 9. This deceptive type of content keeps popping up. You see creators all over claiming Farah got buffed. Lucio players showing clips of Farah's getting kills with Concussive Blast Boop. Tank players showing clips of Farah killing a training bot. Hitscan players showing her still getting the shoot shoot con combo off. All of this was already in the game. The only reason you didn't see the shoot shoot con combo prior to Season 9 was because you didn't need the Concussive Blast to get kills then. With the health pool increase, Farah was no longer able to 2-tap with rockets. 
The reason she received the 30 extra splash damage from Concussive Blast was to compensate for that fact. Her time to kill was raised from 0.85 seconds to 1.6 seconds, starting from the time the first rocket hit. Concussive Blast was similar to a Junkrat mine in that Farah players had to make the decision on whether to use it for damage or movement. If you used it for movement, you were nearly doubling your time to kill. If you used it for damage, you might not be able to escape once you got your elimination. The new Concussive Blast functions exactly as the ability did prior to the Season 9 rework. It does slightly more knockback and has a slightly bigger radius at the expense of not dealing 30 splash damage. I've seen many people who have said that the radius is larger than it was prior to Season 9, or that the knockback has been buffed to be stronger. This is not true. The only thing that is correct from these arguments is that her cooldown remains at 7 seconds. Uh, it was 9 seconds prior to Season 9. This cooldown did not change, as the dev team wants Farah to retain her horizontal movement, rather than having the insane vertical movement that she did before. Hence, her 14 second cooldown on jump jets, which was only 10 seconds prior to Season 9. With Concussive Blast damage being removed, Farah's dueling potential has been crippled. This change requires far more skill on the Farah's part. Previously, the ideal combo in a 1v1 was to hit one direct hit, hit a splash Concussive Blast to boop them to one side, and then fire a second rocket to direct hit them where they land. The reason that this combo was so effective was because the Concussive Blast did 30 damage, meaning that you only needed two direct hits plus the Concussive Blast to secure the kill. It also redirected the enemy's movement, so that they had a hard time hitting their shots on the Fara. And while the enemy is having a hard time hitting their shots, the Fara player has done this combo countless times, and is going to easily be able to hit the shot due to muscle memory. Now, there is no damage. Fara players will need to hit two direct hits, plus a third direct hit concussive blast projectile, which moves at a different speed. This completely changes the way the Fara players will take 1v1s. The old combo will simply not be as effective. Also, hitting the direct hit concussive blast in the middle of the combo doesn't work as well as it does with the splash. As Fara, you want to take 1v1s as close to the enemy as possible, to make it easier for you to land your direct hits, and harder for them to predict your movement. But when you direct hit an enemy with Concussive Blast, they will get shot backwards, further away from you. This makes it far more difficult for you to land your second rocket. The change does make Farah slightly more mobile, as she does 10% more knockback to herself with her E, and she does have more boot potential as well. But I think that the Concussive Blast knockback kills are a very situational thing that only work on certain positions on certain maps, so it's not too much of a concern. But that is it for the direct Farah changes. Simply put, she received slightly more mobility and boot potential at the cost of nearly doubling her time to kill, unless she hits her full triple direct hit combo, which is less effective than the old combo and takes a fair amount of skill to do. Overall, they lowered her dueling power in 1v1s and raised the skill floor of the character. The direct changes to Farah are only half the equation though. The part that I've seen no one comment on is that the global and tank changes heavily impact Farah's viability. Farah had good spam potential and because of this was able to build barrage very fast. With this she was able to solo all tanks pretty consistently to take them out of the fight. Blizzard responded to this by changing the other characters rather than the Farah herself. First off we have the changes to armor. Armor now reduces damage by 10 per high damage projectile as opposed to 5, which means direct hits on tanks now only deal 110 damage rather than 115. 5 less damage per shot may not seem like a lot, but this is a significant number when you add in every single shot put into a tank over the course of the game. Spamming tanks, or any other armor targets, is going to be far less effective. On the same note, Farah, and every other hero, now generates ults even slower when firing at a tank. Ultimate generation reduction when shooting tanks was increased from 30% to 40%, so now, not only is Farah doing less damage to the Winston trying to set up, but she's getting less ult charge for doing it. This means she's not going to have a barrage every fight from simply spamming out the Winston, so she can't just solo ult him every time he dives in. Each individual tank buff also indirectly affects Farah. I'm not going to go over all of them, because they're pretty straightforward. Generally, most tanks can take more damage from Farah, with less consequence have a lot of new tools that allow them to either deal more damage to the Farah, help their team kill Farah, or take more damage from Farah, up to the point of straight up just surviving Barrage. Farah's Concussive Blast change does alter the way Farah functions in a 1v1 scenario. 
It makes her far more punishable by a Cass or Ash or Soldier, who don't have to worry about taking 270 damage in less than a second. The skill floor of the character has been lifted, since you need to hit the Concussive Blast directly to deal that extra 30 damage, or you need to use your enhanced movement to get in a quick melee or dodge a shot and hit a splash rocket, but all of these take longer than the original combo and are less guaranteed to get kills. The global and tank changes limit the amount of value Farah gets from spamming targets with armor and limiting the amount of ult charge she gets by shooting at tanks. Tanks also have a lot more defensive capabilities, meaning they can negate the spam damage more effectively and prevent quick deaths to insanely high burst damage abilities. This will limit Farah's potential to charge up Barrage quickly, and also means she won't just be able to simply solo ult tanks in the middle of their team. If Farah ends up being too strong, even after this patch, I wouldn't be opposed to Blizzard reducing her cooldown for Concussive Blast from 7 to 8, or even back to the 9 than it was prior to the rework. However, if they do go the route of the 9 second cooldown, I would like to see a reduction of the cooldown under Jump Jet, since it doesn't even get you the same height as a Baptiste Exo Boost, which is literally just a zero cooldown passive ability. I do wish they would have avoided making her weaker in 1v1s, because I think that's the part of Farah's gameplay that is actually exciting and interactive. Generally, the most hated part of Farah is her spammy backline playstyle where she just launches rockets across the map. I personally prefer to be far more aggressive, and this change is going to limit how many duels I can take. Still, I think that right now, Farah will be in a pretty good place. She won't be too strong in the 1v1 against hitscan characters anymore, and she won't be stopping tanks from playing the game. If anyone has any ideas on how they would change Farah for the better, I would love to hear them. Thanks for listening to my rant.